Okay, we've got the tubing all straightened and deburred. I used a little sandpaper on the outside to get rid of the little extra burr. It's a good idea to put the flare nut on now. Uh, obviously, if you flared this tubing, you're not getting the flare nut on afterwards. We got the right size dies. You put the tubing in there. You just set it in there. Put the catch over the top. Put a little bit of light, light tension on this guy. What you want to do now is this tool has like a positioning die to it. So you rotate it around, just a flat piece of metal. So you rotate it around and this will position the tubing at the exact right place within the dies. It just back, backs it up against the dies. Then you can snug this down more thoroughly. You don't want the tubing sliding in the die. We're going to do a 3 8 double flare and so that's two operations to accomplish this. Each one of these dies forms a different shape. So we're going to use the one that's labeled 3 8 Operation 1. You give it a pull until it bottoms out. Then you rotate this to 3 8 Operation 2. Give it a pull until she bombs out. Loosen this guy up. And at this point, it's handy if you, if you wiggle the tubing and turn it to break it free of the die before you pull the pin and flip it out. It just makes it easier to get the die off of it. And you can see, we just made our, our 3 8 double flare pretty easily. Uh, anybody who's ever tried to flare tubing with the little hand tools knows how hard that can be. And uh, if it doesn't come out right, you just do it again. Like you can, you can look at it, see if there's any defects. This one looks okay to me. Um, and there you go. It's a pretty nice little tool. I recommend you buy it. They're not that much money, maybe 125 bucks, something like that. But it's the best flaring tool I've seen for, for the home hobbyist.